I'm sorry to say that it's rare for me to encounter a web team within an organization that has enough people to do the work asked of them. Instead, they end up with a big backlog of projects that they need to complete, and they end up with unhappy internal clients, each shouting for their project to be at the top of the list. The result is that projects which you prioritize are those that belong to your colleagues who have got the loudest voice. There's no sense that projects are completed um, because they're best at meeting user needs or organizational objectives. It's all about who shouts the loudest and that really has to change. We can't carry on working like that. Expanding the size of the web team to accommodate demand would seem like the obvious solution to this problem, but let's be honest, what is obvious is really what happens in most organizations. The next best solution is something that I've come to call digital triage. If you've ever watched an episode of MASH or a documentary set in an emergency room, you've already seen triage in action. As patients come in, doctors assess their injuries, and the more serious the injury, the faster they receive care. When it comes to the life or death situations, a first come, first serve approach doesn't always work the best. Another thing that I've noticed is that they teach doctors arriving on the scene of a disaster not to prioritize patients who are screaming for help. If they're capable of doing that, then they don't have an immediate need that needs attending to. There is a lot that you can learn from this approach to prioritization. For a start, we shouldn't be dealing with projects on a first come, first serve basis. We should be prioritizing the critical projects, the one that are life and death for your organization. Second, we can't presume that a project is critical just because it's backed by the, uh, one of our vocal colleagues. Just because they shout loud doesn't mean their project is urgent. Like a doctor, we need to be more objective about the way we prioritize our patients as they come to us. How then do we prioritize where a project sits within the backlog? Well, I think there are three criteria we need to be using. First of all, how business critical is the project? Every web team should have a prioritized list of organizational objectives. Every project that the team undertakes should fulfill at least one of these organizational objectives. The higher the organizational objective within the list, the more business critical the project is and so the higher it should be placed in the backlog. Secondly, how important is the audience that the project is serving? As well as having a prioritized list of organizational goals, we should also have a prioritized list of users. A project should meet at least one user's needs, one of our audiences. The more important that user group, the higher priority the project will receive in the backlog. Now, there is one caveat to this that you need to be aware of. You also need to be assessing how important the task is to the user the project is serving. You shouldn't prioritize a project that serves an important audience, but provides little value to that audience. The final criteria is how easy it is to build. If somebody comes to the team with a request that is easy to build and won't have much of an impact on other projects, you can go ahead and prioritize it, even if it doesn't serve a particularly important goal or a particularly important user group. Of course, this is all well and good in principle, but what happens when people start complaining about your system? Well, in my experience, few people will object to a fair and open system. The problem comes when people um, don't perceive your system as fair and open. If they think a colleague is getting preferential treatment, they're going to be quick to complain, so we have to be careful to deal with that. The secret here is to clearly document how you go about assessing where a project fits into the backlog. As soon as somebody contacts you, you need to be able to show them the criteria by which you're going to assess their project. You need to be able to show them the prioritized list of user groups and objectives, and you also need to be able to justify how you went about prioritizing those lists. Getting executive approval for these lists will certainly help with that, so take the time to do that. I would also recommend having a backlog online somewhere where your colleagues can see it. Update this often so that people can see how their position in the queue is progressing and get a sense of how you're progressing through the other projects. Projects in the queue should also show 
which audiences they serve, which business objectives they meet, and an estimate of how long the project is likely to take. It's also important to stress that your colleagues don't have a monopoly on introducing new projects. I see many web teams frustrated that they don't have the time to address important projects because they don't really have a client of any description. For example, many web teams feel that they need more time to think strategically, but they don't have that because it's not an official project. Using this digital triage model, there's no reason why you can't introduce your own projects into the backlog. Just make sure you assess and prioritize them just like any other project and you'll be fine. Now, this approach is not perfect, but then no approach is. What it does give you is a way of dealing with complaints and prioritizing work that is actually important, important to the organization and important to the user. It also puts you in control of the process because you're the one that's assessing projects. And you also created the criteria by which they're being assessed. That should at least give you some help in managing projects in a more sensible way.